on the things of God and the, and the blessings of God and the goodness of God. And, and uh, I'm just so thankful. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this morning because uh, uh, the Holy Spirit has been directing us in a series and we are just right on schedule today. You mean, what do you mean by schedule? It's a Holy Ghost schedule. I, di- I couldn't plan it any better. If you, uh, uh, we're going to talk about barriers and breakthroughs again this morning. And uh, this is part six this morning. And if you'd have told me where we were going to be, I, I'm not one of those preachers that goes online and buys those canned uh, six series messages and then you can announce them for the next six weeks. No, I, I pray and I, and I get the word of the Lord that he has for us as a church. And so we just kind of, and the Holy Spirit will just weave us in and out. And uh, I, 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 six weeks ago, I didn't know we would be here talking about what we're going to talk about today. And it just so happens the Holy Ghost knows. I mean, you know, the Holy, when I say Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, He knows where we're going to be as a church. And this just happens to be Connect Group Rally Day. And so we're going to actually talk about the body of Christ this morning and uh, specifically our commitment. Woohoo! Uh, to not only the body of Christ, but really to Jesus. And so uh, if you've missed the previous messages, you can get those. You can go back online and watch those. But go ahead and look in your Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 5. 2 Samuel chapter 5. That's a, this is our main text because uh, I've been hammering this because you need to know, number one, the will of God for your life is that you have breakthroughs. Not just a breakthrough, but breakthroughs. Anybody like breakthroughs? Come on, somebody shout, breakthrough. breakthrough. Anybody expecting? Anybody been having any breakthroughs? I've been hearing about some breakthroughs. Wonderful things are taking place. And uh, if you haven't had your breakthrough yet, well, just keep holding on. Just keep uh, staying in faith. Keep looking to the Lord because uh, it is the Lord's will that you have breakthrough. All right? Everybody say breakthrough one more time. Now, when we say breakthrough, we mean what we mean is, is uh, you, you moving past the point where you couldn't get it on your own. So God giving you that push to get you past. And it is the Lord's will actually for you to, to move forward. Remember Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but meditate on it day and night, that you might be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Prosperous means to break forth and to move forward. It is God's will for you to be prosperous, to break forth, and to move forward in life. And if you'll be a doer of the word, you will continually break forward. You will, you will move forward, and you'll have some breakouts. Amen. And uh, remember again, we said in Micah 2.13 that Jesus is the breaker. He's already breaking forth for us. So, amen, we've got to, by faith, take hold of his promises and all that he's done for us and just press on through. Amen. The devil gets in your way, you just roll over him. Amen. And you break out. I'm believing for some breakouts, some big breakouts. Come on, you got to believe with me here. I'm praying for you that you're going to have some breakouts. Holy Spirit breakout. Outpourings in these last days. God says that we're in the midst of the last days. And he said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So we'll have some breakouts. Times of refreshing that he gave me for this year. All right, let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 5. It says in verse 20, actually the context here, David had just been anointed king and the Philistines hear about it. And so they've come to, the Philistines have gathered against David. They're going to try to kill him. I mean, war, fixing a breakout. And so David inquires of the Lord. How many know when you are against, in a battle, or you see a battle coming, or maybe you just got caught off surprise, it's always good to go to the Lord. James said it like this, if you're going through a test, if you're going through a trial, let him pray. All right? Pray. Prayer is, means you're going to God. And there's situations that come in life. Kid situation, relationship situation, financial job, thing, all kinds of things. And you, you need to, don't, don't get depressed. Don't get quiet. Don't start getting down. Go to God and say, Lord, I don't have the answers, but you do. And I'm not saying you're going to walk out of there with all the answers, but you know what? If you'll walk out saying, I cast my cares upon the Lord, he will begin to move and work for you, and you'll see it come. That's the way he works. Sometimes you get things, sometimes you get an immediate direction, something opens up, or as you're praying, and then other times it's just you walk out of that place of prayer with confidence and saying, God is directing my steps, like Donna was praying a while ago. A good man's steps are ordered by the Lord, so he is directing me. So David seeks the Lord, and he says, number one, he said, Lord, should I go up against him? Well, that's a good thing, because, you know, if God's not with you, if he's not giving you direction, I mean, somebody said, you know, uh, um, what is it, uh, if, you, if, you, if you get to the top of the building, but you're on the wrong building, that's not success. 
So you want to get the direction of the Lord. And so the Lord says, yeah, go up against them. And so David goes up against them. And it says in verse 20, so David came to Baal Perazim and defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like the breakthrough of waters. Again, keep this in mind. David went, but God gave him the breakthrough. The Lord is with you. Jesus has promised us the church. He said, I'll be with you wherever you go. Even to the end of the age. That means that wasn't just for the disciples. That is for us, the church. In 2018, Jesus, the head of the church, said he would be with us. Never leave us. Never forsake us. It's impossible for him to leave you because he loves you. And Paul said in Romans 8, nothing can separate you from his love. High death principalities, nothing can separate you from the love of God. So don't ever start, well, I just don't want God doing it. No, no, that, you're thinking wrong. Slap yourself. Check yourself or you wreck yourself and say, God's on my side. He's helping me. I'm going to get in faith right here. He's going to move for me. Why? Why? Number one, because he loves you. And you can't do anything to change it. You can't do enough bad. You can't do enough good. He loves you. Oh, and that's, uh, this, is, this is good stuff here, all right? So he says here, that, therefore he named the place because the Lord broke through. The Lord gave him victory. And he, so he named that place Baal Perazim, which means Lord of the breaking through. In other words, not just the Lord of the breakthrough, but Lord of the breaking through. In other words, more than one. Amen. You can get a breakthrough and you can have another breakthrough. And then you have another breakthrough. Matter of fact, we said it like this. Anytime you're just going through life, you break out of one thing, there's probably going to be something else you're going to need to go through. Especially when you're trying to just go up and mature and grow in God. All right? So here's the deal. It is the Lord's will to give you breakthroughs. God's will. So my pastor, do you know what the Lord's will is for my life? Yeah, that you have breakthroughs. He'll see to it. And so uh, many times... There's a Godward side and there's a manward side. God moves in his son Jesus. Amen. He sent his word. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed us and delivered us from all destruction. He sent his word. So it's your job to get full of the word. Sometimes it's not your job to get healed. It's your job to get full. Get full and you'll get healed. Get full and you'll see what you need to see. Get full of the spirit and you'll, you'll, you'll see what it is that you're called to do. Many times things, uh, things get activated when you get saturated by the Spirit. And you get full of God, full of His Word. That's the key. You cannot be, you're unstoppable when you're full of God. And God wants you full, all right? So we position ourselves many times for breakthrough. That's what's important to understand. In other words, don't just sit back and say, well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Well, are you doing everything that you can do? Are you pressing? Are you searching? Are you seeking? Are you knocking? Are you doing everything that you know to do? Because breakthrough, uh, we have to, we said, uh, we've covered this. I won't go back into detail, but we're talking really at this point, if you want to have breakthrough in your life, you've got to get committed. Everybody say committed. <laughs> that is a serious word. Serious word. When I do premarital counseling, I hammer that word commitment. If you want success, you've got to get committed no matter what you're doing in life. If you're going to start a business, you've got to stay committed. Amen. If you're going to be in a marriage, you've got to stay committed. Amen? And so uh, commitment really, and we're breaking it down one step further, commitment to what? To the revealed will of God for your life. If you're going to have breakthroughs, you're going to have to commit to the revealed will of God. And we talked about how does the revealed will of God come. Number one, it comes by the word of God. Everybody say by the word of God. So your commitment to the revealed will of God. All right. When we commit to the revealed will of God, then the grace of the Lord becomes available because of our commitment. Again, we said it like this last week. Really, it's when you make the commitment to do something, when all of a sudden that's when things start opening up. The provision comes. The people come. The, you make a decision to step out. And things begin to open up. Things begin to come. I said this. Lack of commitment is really at the root of every failure that people experience. You got to be committed. Because this is it, Listen, it's easy to say I'm committed. Oh, well, I'm, I'm committed. Well, really, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. Just spiritually and things, there's a lot of people that really aren't committed. All right, I'll leave that one alone. Let's keep moving on here. Keep moving forward and, uh, you know, just go on here. But we talked about these areas that we're to be committed to just as a believer. Ba these are basic things. That's why I love. If you want you, some basic Christianity 101, there's some things that you have to be committed to. Number one, uh, your salvation. What do you mean by salvation? Well, when you got saved, you made a commitment to the Lord Jesus. Did you not? I mean, 
I mean, there's really the picture of covenant we talk about in the marriage covenant. Two people coming together, they're making a commitment to one another. That's covenant. Well, God made a commitment to us to love us, to care for us. And, and he said, you know, we give him our life. So we make a commitment, number one, to salvation. And then really, number two, again, the word, the revealed will of God comes by the word. And so we're committed to uh, what he shows us in his word. In other words, to love, to forgive. Those things aren't uh, optional. We're commanded to forgive. We're commanded to love. We're going to talk about another command this morning. We'll get to it in just a minute. But things that we're commanded to do in the Word, cast your care on. Your command. That is not an option of, well, I think I'll carry this one. I, you know, I can handle this. No, God wants you to cast everything upon Him. He does not want you worrying. He does not want you fretting. Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You're talking to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So we were to grow, we're to develop. There's things that the word is going to reveal to us. And then we said there's the second way that revelation comes, the revealed will of God comes to our life, is by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to show you. You don't get details in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John specifically about your life. You know, you do this job, this is what I've called you to do. So you've got to pray some of those things out. You walk some of these things out by faith, and you pursue, and, you, and you're, you're talking to God about what is the purpose for my life. In other words, God is the designer. He, is the, he, is the, he gives you the designer life. Amen. And he, has, he custom makes things for you. He, he has custom designed a life for you. That's Ephesians 2.10. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Amplified says that he's already created paths. He's prearranged things made ready ahead of time for us to walk in, live in the good life. If you'll follow God, he's got a good life for you. Why? Because he's good. But then we get off doing our own things and then we want to blame God for it. No, it wasn't his fault. We got to get back on the path. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter. So, you know, there's righteousness is involved. You've been made righteous, so you walk righteous. Amen? And so we talked about that. So, uh, you know, things in the Word, and specifically last week we talked about, we talked about Jesus. Uh, let me put it like this, and let me catch up real fast because I can't go back over all of it. But, but when we're talking about commitment, we're talking about the confession that you make. For salvation, you made a confession to God to call him Lord and Savior. Well, you don't stop. You continue to confess him as Lord. You confess, I'm a child of God. You, you, somebody said, are you a Christian? You go, yeah. That's a confession, a bold confession. Confession goes with uh, the fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. And you make a good confession. So there, confession is involved. And confession literally means commitment. So you're making a commitment to God. And there's things in the word that, that when we hold fast to it, we're making a commitment to it. And the commitment is what brings the breakthrough. We're talking about, I'm, really, you could call this qualifiers for breakthrough. Jesus, we said in uh, Hebrews 3, 1, he is the apostle and high priest of our confession. Everybody say confession. And so then we talked about 4.26 as we're to hold fast the confession of our faith. All right, hold fast to it. So that means you've got to hold fast to your commitments. One of those includes Jesus as our high priest. You're committed to bringing your tithe. We talked about that last week. Your tithe. Jesus, Hebrews 7, 8 says, Jesus, your high priest receives the tithe. Anyway, won't, won't go back into that. But let's talk about another area. I'm going to get to this because I'm so pumped about this. Glory to God. So this uh, other area we're going to just touch on today. And I might even teach a series on this. Just kind of break it a whole different direction from here, man, because it's wonderful. And we're going to talk about your commitment to what? The body of Christ. Your commitment to the body of Christ. Now, uh, because we've covered some scriptures in Hebrews, look in Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 23, Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope. That word hope there, the Bible word hope is expectation. Let us hold fast the confession. Everybody say confession. Now that word confession, again, is the same Greek word homologeo. So homologeo means it's you're saying the same thing. And when you say the same thing, it's like building blocks like Legos. That's where we get that word Lego. You're built, when Jesus is talking about confession and speaking the word. So hold fast the confession. Now this is the third scripture that we looked at in line with your confession. So you can say like this. Hold fast to your commitment. Your commitment of hope. Your commitment of expectation without wavering for he who promised is faithful. So he's talking here about your commitments. Let's hold fast the commitments of faith that we have made. In other words, whatever you've committed to, don't waver in it. You got to stick with your commitment, all right? Whatever you've committed to when it comes to the revealed will of God, hold fast to it. Think about this. Remember the parable of the sower when Jesus talked about four kinds of ground and only, the, only 
uh, hear the word and bring forth fruit 30, 60, and 100-fold. One of the translations says uh, the, good, the, the final ground that hears the word in a good and honest heart and whole, it says, and they receive it and hold fast and bring forth fruit with perseverance. That means perseverance is involved in commitment. If you're committed, you're going to have to persevere. We're not talking about everybody wants it easy. That's why nobody likes commitment. Everybody wants a back door out. Nobody wants to feel like they're locked into something or, or commit to, oh, I'm going to commit to this or I'm going to commit to that because then you've got to show up. So nobody wants to feel like they're locked into anything. Even when it comes to church, people, I mean, we're in a day now, I'm telling you what, where people just kind of want to, uh, because we're at the end of the age, and Jesus said the first sign that you know you're at the end of the end of the end of age is deception. And so you got all kinds of goofiness going on and people thinking what they, and, 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 you know, just kind of doing what they want. Well, this is what I believe. Well, no, if what you believe doesn't line up with what the Word says, then you, what you believe in is wrong, it's false, it's deception. And the enemy's trying out to deceive people. And so we have to understand, we, we have to be uh, committed. And so there's a perseverance involved. Keep going here in Hebrews 10, 24. It says, and let us consider. Here's where we're, here, here's where we're going with this. Let us consider. Everybody say consider. That means you've got to think on something. Let us consider. This is Hebrews 10, 24. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and to good deeds. Not forsaking. Notice verse 25. Not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What does that mean? Well, what he's saying here is, is that the closer we get to the end, we can see that the end is wrapping up. Jesus is about to get ready to rapture the church. And then you know the end, seven years of tribulation. And we got, we got and then Jesus, you know, setting up his rule and reign on the earth. So you can see the end. Of, that's what they were, disciples were asking, asking Jesus about in Matthew 24. When will be the sign of your coming and end of the age and what's going to take place and, and so forth. And the end of the age. So this age is coming to an end. How many of you know that? This age is fastly coming to a close. And in the end, there are signs that tell us, all right? And so the Bible says if you're alert, if you're, ha I mean, if you're aware and you're, in, you're, number one, you need to be in church. But he said you can, you can just know by, by all the signs that are going on, everything that's going on in the earth and the deception and all, every, this, it's the signs. I mean, all kind, I, we, we could preach on end times now. But he said you can know that the end of the age is near. And he said and you can see that coming. And the more you see that coming, the more you need to be in church. That's what he's talking about. So this subject, notice, consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. This subject has to rank as one of the highest next to what we've been talking about already, doing the word, bringing your tithe, all these things that we're committed to, but really commitment to the body of Christ, specifically the local body, the local church that God has called you to be involved in. Your commitment to it, all right? This is not talking about just any uh, gathering of people, but a local body of believers that's carrying out the Great Commission. In other words, you know, people just oh, we just got our same little five and six bless me club, you know, no more. You're not carrying out the Great Commission, then you really, uh, we have really a uh, good question to say, are you really a church? Are you here? So the commitment, he's talking about your commitment to the body of Christ. The one that he's called you to be connected to. All right? This is not talking about any just group. All right? This is, this is not talking about, you know, just, oh, we get in our group over here or our connect group and we're, you know. No, this is about a, an overall body of Christ, local body of believers that God has raised up. There is, a, there is a vision. There's a passion. Amen? To run and carry the vision, touch the world. That's what, we, that's what our vision is here. Amen? We are the light of the world, salt of the earth, light of the world. Uh, color in our world. If you need color, you're in the right place. If you want to get color, touch the world, you're in the right place. Let's go color the world. Let's make a difference. Let's make an impact. And so the word assembly, he said, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Well, the word assembling has to do with a picture of a jigsaw puzzle. That's why sometimes we'll do graphics and we'll have, you know, in this, along these lines and we'll talk about little pieces of the puzzle because it's, the assembling has to do with a jigsaw puzzle with pieces that fit together where they belong. Look at your neighbor and say, you fit somewhere. You fit. Matter of fact, let me give you a verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at this verse. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says, But now God has placed the members, 
each one of them in the body just as he desires. One translation says, where it pleases him. Now, a lot of people want to wrangle with this one, but let me just tell you. What he's talking about is God has a specific church, a specific body of believers where you fit, where you are involved, where you are connected, and that affects your breakthrough. Amen. So guess what the devil's going to do? He's going to work real hard to get you out of your place. Let me give you another voice translation. Do I have the voice translation up there? Look at this. This is the voice translation. God has meticulously put this body together. He placed each part in, that, in the exact place to perform the exact function he wanted. Think about that. To perform the exact function that he wanted because, number one, he created you. He knows, what, he knows how you're designed, and he knows where you fit. He knows what you like. He knows whether you're supposed to be in children's ministry, youth ministry, helps me, whatever part, what you're called to do. He has designed you to fit. And you've got a place to fit. And when you fit, it's a good thing. I mean, it's good to fit. And a lot of people are trying to figure out where they fit. And I'm well, you know, they're looking in, and, and there's nothing wrong with searching, but you need, to, you need to land. Amen. You need to fit. So he has a place for every member. And so you've got to understand how important this is. This, there's, there's not a lot of things that are listed in the New Testament that please God. I'm talking about things that the New Testament says this pleases God. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10 says that we should try to learn what pleases the Lord. So there, are, there are things that please the Lord. Jesus said, I always do what pleases the Father. He never leaves me because I always do what pleases the Father. So we should desire to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. And there are things in the New Testament, very few things in the New Testament. One of them is without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, another thing in the Bible that tells us that pleases God is your prosperity. God takes great delight, pleasure in the prosperity of it. God wants you to prosper. God, he takes delight. Just like as a parent, you see your kids doing good, doing well, flourishing. You're like, oh, man, that's my boy. You take pleasure in that. Well, here... One of the other few places is that God takes pleasure when you are in the place that he made you to be. He's pleased because you're in the right place. And that's been, because he knows that's going to benefit you. That's going to help you. All right? So it's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to, uh, uh, for, you know, God wants you to uh, prosper. And then again, it, 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 it pleases him when you're in the place that he's ordained you to be. That's how serious it is. I'm talking about ordained you. Ordained means if you don't ever get there, you're missing out. Wouldn't be as good as it, as, as it would have been. So, so uh, th in this place, when this person finds this place and they are, they're, they're going to be growing, they're going to be maturing in that place more than they would be anywhere else. Anywhere else. God's got that place for them. And, and, and the point is, there's a place that it pleases God to put you in, and this place is where uh, we assemble. It's where we come together, and it's where we fit. All right? So he's saying here, if you don't make a commitment to come together with regularity in your church, then you're not going to have the admonishment and the exhortation that's needed to keep any of your commitments of faith. Because you, you need the admonishment. You need that commitment to carry through and to do what, you've, what you're supposed to be doing. And See, there's just too many families, really. And I, hate to, I don't want to just say families. It's society. Again, that's part of that deception in the end times. But, but there's more families committed to their children's sports than they are their church. Now, you might not like that, but it's the truth. I've been doing this a long time now, 10 years ago. When my kids were in school, nobody planned anything on Sunday morning or Wednesday. You didn't have sports on Wednesday nights. You didn't have stuff going on on Wednesday nights, but now very few churches, I don't, I don't think we're one of the few churches that even have church on Wednesday nights that I, I, mean, uh, that I know of. There's a few, but more and more, they don't even do church on Wednesday nights because, what, there's competition. And so, but I'm not stopping. Because the Bible says the more and more you see the day drawing near, we don't drop these things or, or are assembling together. It's important. But, and, and, and I'm nothing wrong with sports. I mean, do sports, but, you know, we taught our, I mean, if there was stuff going on, if, if church was going on and something else was going on, church was our priority. My kids being in church, us, and not just because we were called, not just because that was our job as a pastor, but that's the way we were before I actually got in ministry. I mean, I've always been in ministry, for, in a sense, youth ministry and different things, but, but uh, you know, that's just, 
You just don't, you don't compromise in that area. Why? Because you're committed. Let me just say it like this. Did you know the first revelation that Paul had? You know what Paul's first revelation that he ever had was? Was that the body of Christ was Jesus. Remember when he got knocked off his horse? And he was persecuting the church? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. Paul's first revelation was that the body of Christ was Jesus. The body of Christ. And that's why so much happens when we're involved and we're connected. I'm, I'm coming up to that. Because even, even Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, if you want to be healthy and you don't want to die early and you want to live healthy, he said, discern the body. Discern the body of Christ. Two directions. Number one, what he did for you. Number two, your brethren are and sistren are the body of Christ and you don't want to talk about them and you don't want to backbite and you don't want to bite and devour one another because that's the body and that's the fastest way. You're not walking in love. That's the fastest way to get sick and if you don't want to forgive and you want to stay in the gall of bitterness, that's the fastest way to die early. Get something, pick something up and go home and see Jesus early. You understand? For this reason, many are sick and die prematurely because they didn't discern the body of the Lord, the body of Christ. What he did for us, in other words, he's provided everything for us, or, again, you didn't, you get busy not guarding your tongue. All right, that's a side thought there. But let's go, look, look at the New Living Translation of Hebrews 10, 23. It says, without wavering, he says, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have. In other words, we're saying something. Hold tightly, stay committed to what you say you have and who you are. For God cannot, God can be trusted to keep his promise. How many believe he can be trusted? Think of ways to encourage one another to outbursts of love and good deeds. That means when we're serving, when we're doing what God's called us to do, we provoke one another to love and to good deeds. Somebody looks at, oh man, I need to do that, or I, need, I can do that, I can get involved with that. Stay with me here just a minute. He says, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day is, is coming back again is drawing near. So he's saying, if you don't have a local church, he's saying you won't have the encouragement, you won't have the admonishment, the exhortation that you need to keep any of your commitments, and your life really won't go anywhere. you just stalled out, just floating through life like a jellyfish and painful to be around. That's the way I like to say it. So really, again, you go to church where you fit, and there are people here. That, this is what you start thinking. You break this down. There are people here that are gifted to speak into your life and that you won't find anywhere else. That's what happens when you get plugged in. You walk in, let's say, you walk into the front door. Man, you're coming into church on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night or we're doing something and you're feeling a little down. Maybe you're feeling, how to look, you're dragging a little bit and all of a sudden somebody greets you and they hug your neck and they say, man, I'm glad to see you. And, then, and you feel like the pulpit is preaching right to you and then in, in your situation and then on the way out, somebody else says, hey, love you, man, so glad. And you went out, you came in kind of dragging, but you went out feeling good. You're going, man. And if you understand how the power of the blood of Jesus operates, the blood circulates, and so while you're coming in, you might have been dragging, but you kind of got a blood transfusion while you were in church on Sunday morning, Wednesday, because the blood cleanses, and you're hearing the word, and it washes, and you go out going, whoa, I feel better than when I came in. I got encouraged. I got built up. All right? And, and bam, you're back on your feet. What happened? The grace is released to you because you were in your place. Now, everything that we've been talking about in the last several weeks has to do with the grace. Jesus, our high priest, when we're honoring, we're in our place, and we're, we're in our confession, grace is being released. That's part of it. So we're to be committed to the local church that God puts us in. Church is not an option or a matter of convenience. And I'm not just preaching this because I'm a pastor. I'm preaching it because I want people to be blessed. <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line. You understand? I mean, uh, well, let me keep going here. I, got, I can get bogged down, all right? So we're talking about commitment to the revealed will of God. And the leadership, the leadership of a church has to be committed. And then really, if you break it down, you've got the leadership. Let's say our staff, leaders, all our main leaders. But then you've got to develop. We have to have a, 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 a core of committed people. Are you in the core? That's a good question. Because the core is blessed. Amen. A core of committed people, all right? So I'm talking about breakthrough. And you're committed. Now watch this, I'm coming up to something. Stay with me, I'm saying all this to get somewhere. So when it comes to the revealed will of God on a larger scale, the same for all of us, the key is, is God wants you to increase. See, all this started because of this land thing. I was reading, 
Romans 10, 13. Oh, no man, anything but love one another. And I got stirred about this and believing for the church to have some debt-free things and just kind of going along these lines. But God wants his church to increase. God wants this church to increase. He wants you to increase. It's a group thing. It's a church thing. It's a righteous thing. And you've got to have that in mind. So you've got to understand that a major part of your supply... All right, you ready for this? <laughs> A major part of your supply is bringing people to church. (laughs) Think about that. You know, it's not hard to take a city. Do you know that? Because every one of you, probably very few of you work at the same place or go to the same school or whatever. But just one person bringing somebody else, just bring somebody else to church every year. You just get one person. Wouldn't take long. We'd be in that building real fast. We'd be busting out walls. You understand what I'm saying? It's not hard to take a city. But, again, people don't realize that a big part of our supply is bringing people. Ephesians 4, listen, let me just uh, go to Ephesians 4 real fast. I've got just a couple scriptures, but I, I want to uh, impart something else here. Ephesians 4 uh, basically says that, uh, remember Jesus gave gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipment of the saints for the work of the ministry. Everybody say the work of the ministry. So the work of the ministry. Now, according to verse 16, if you look at verse 16, this is Ephesians 4, 16. Well, let me just back up here just a minute. Ephesians 4, verse 12. Here it is again. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the service. Notice this phrase, for the building up of the body of Christ. You know, I found out Jesus was a bodybuilder. Did you know that? Jesus is into bodybuilding. Matthew 16. Remember what Jesus said? He told Peter, upon this rock, Revelation, I'm the Christ, I'm going to build my church. So he's building the church. He's building the body. And here, he says the purpose for these ministry gifts, and we're, we're talking about prayer on Wednesday nights and praying for the ministry gifts and how important it is and for utterance. He says that these, is, the purpose is to equip the saints. Everybody say, that would be me. Aren't you glad you don't have to be, uh, anyway. Uh, so he says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, Notice what happens. When, when the saints are working and doing the part of the service, what happens? The building up of the body of Christ. So what happens if you only got about 20% of the saints doing work? Well, you have a shortage of supply. He goes on to say, as a result, he's talking about not being like children, waved, tossed around, and so forth. Look at verse 16. He's, well, verse 15. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by that which every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part. Say, I'm a working part. I'm going to say it again. i got to be a working part. Causes what? What happens? What happens? Causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. So in other words, the purpose for all the parts that God puts together is when everybody's working together and bringing of their supply, people, finances, whatever it is, when they're doing their part, it causes the body to be built up. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. In other words, when you add your supply through bringing people, using your abilities, financial supply, the result is increase in the body. That's what Paul's talking about. And so this is the way breakthrough comes. Every member making their supply. It's not rocket science. It's just every member, every part in their place, working, doing what God's asked them to do, fitting where he's called them to fit. It's like joints and parts going together. It brings increase. So again, think about it. If you got 20%, I mean, statistics say, I mean, just in a local church, maybe that, I mean, even the, the, what is it, John Maxwell, if you do any leadership, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. <laughs> well, if you got 20% of the people, that means 20% of the people are blessed, and the other 80 are missing out on their blessing. Can you say amen? All right, keep looking forward, smiling, nobody knows we're talking about you. Anyway, so, I mean, that's, that's just the average. 20% of the people doing 80% of the work. But think about 100% doing, doing their part, fitting somewhere. All right, what, 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 I'm, I'm committed to be in my place. 
I'm committed to add of my supply. And in, this, in my church where I'm at, what's going to happen? You are going to be affected. It's going, to affect, it's going to bring breakthrough in your life. Let me say it like this. As long as, you're, as long as you are a contributing member of the body, supernaturally and spiritually, you're entitled to partake of the increase that comes to the body on an individual basis. You're entitled to it. It's a law. You cannot make a contribution to the increase of the body of Christ and experience increase and, you, and not experience increase in your life as well. It is a spiritual law. When you give, it will be given back to you. When you bring of your supply and you do your part, it is a law. It will come back to you. you, when, you need a, when you need that supernatural thrust, when you need that breakthrough in your life, when you need that wisdom, when you need that financial deal, whatever's going on, you need, because you are bringing, you're doing your part, it is a spiritual law. Are you getting this? Because it, it's, just, it's just designed that way. And that's why he said, all the more as you see the day draw near, you make sure you're in your place and don't you not, don't not forsake. Do, in other words, don't just say, well, they don't need me or I'm tired. Or, that's not an excuse. No, you, it'll, it'll affect you. Amen. Think about it just like this. If you compare the physical body to the body of Christ, your physical body, your natural body develops and grows from birth. And if it's normal, everything's working good. Amen. The body's working and, and it participates in, in the increase of the body. In other words, when all your body's functioning right, you could say it like that. There's increase in the body. It's functioning like it's supposed to. But what happens if you tie your arm, if you just decided to tie your arm up for a while and not use it and just never let it, what's going to happen to your arm? Well, if you've ever had a cast on, you know what happens. You don't use it. it the muscles start atrophying. It, nothing, in other words, they just, it actually begins to die. If you don't use it, you lose it. Kind of like that. That's a principle. And so atrophy means to weaken or waste away through disuse or the effects of disease. So in other words, it's just not really a participating member. And so you see the, the picture. So it's no longer participating in the increase of the body. And so spiritually, when you contribute of your supply and fulfilling your commitment, the results are that the church will increase and you yourself will increase. That's the way God designed it. It's like a functioning body, and you partake of those blessings and those benefits. So we have to be willing to commit to the overall purpose of the church. And Paul said it like this in Philippians. Let me just read it for you. He said, you, get, you, you, you strive to get in one mind and one accord for the sake of the gospel. Look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, and I'm closing right here. He says, stand firm in one spirit with one mind, striving for the faith of the gospel. Now he's talking about, a, he's writing to the Philippian church. Read it again. Standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Well, what does that mean? Well, we've got to be increased minded to see our church grow. To have the breakthroughs that we want, not just individually, but he's talking about corporately. Individual breakthroughs, corporate breakthroughs. I mean, it affects us all as a whole. But in other words, uh, that's going to take commitment. Striving together, one accord, one mind, that's going to take commitment. Amen. In other words, when he's talking about fitting and committing, it means, you know, if there's a need, in the children's ministry. If there's, a need in the, if there's a need in the meal ministry, if there's a need somewhere. In other words, he said, you see the need. Sometimes God's already designed people to fit in those needs. That's what I love. I mean, I, you know, when I, I was looking up this morning, I was, thinking about, um, I was thinking about Kennedy over here playing the guitar. And I was thinking about Connor over here playing the bass. These guys grew up in our church. Kaysen, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're both Steve. I, I called him Kaysen this morning. Anyway. But, but they, they grew up in the church God's design people to, all of a sudden, they start fitting in, in somewhere. They were learning in children's ministry, and then, they're, and then they're coming up, and now she's over here on the guitar. He's over here on the bass. And then you got Annette, you know, they just asked her, Gail texted me and said, Annette got asked to lead during, uh, or in, uh, during Rama, and during the, you know, up on, and, and she used to stand up just scared to death up here on the stage. Just be like frozen and singing. I, sometimes I think her armor's broke because she'd be like this. <laughs> but now at Rayma, she's got a gift. And the, and the gift, the church is a place for gifts to begin to flourish and to, to be used. And, and you know, you don't, you're not perfect. 
when you're doing it, you're just trying to grow and trying to use my gift. And, and all of a sudden, then it gets you, and all of a sudden, man, boom, boom, and now you're flourishing. Because God designs it that way. And, it, and, and the band, or, or that, that's one example, but even callings, and, and whether it's youth ministry, children's ministry, just, I mean, Jesus said, if, that's why, listen to what he said. He said, if you just give a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, you will not lose your reward. He goes on the point, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. He's talking about his body. So uh, it's so important that we're recognizing, I'm out of time, that we're, w- w- are we committed to our local body? I mean, just it comes down to church is very vital. Church is everything. It's not an option. It's a command. We're talking about especially in these last days. Are, are you listening? So we qualify for breakthrough as we commit to the revealed will of God. That's really what we're talking about. And commitment releases, makes available the power of God. It really looses the grace of God to do the things that you could not otherwise do on your own. So in other words, in other words, people that really, if you know, I mean, they can be saved, but they're not really connected, not really hooked up in a church somewhere. Uh, they're not going to have what they could have. I'm not saying they won't have you, because God's just good. He, he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. But, but I, wanna, I want to experience everything that God has. Amen? I want my gifts and abilities to flourish and let God do everything that he wants to do through us. And so he's going to say, that's going to take place because of your commitment. Now, unless the Lord kind of, I'm going to get back on this a little bit later, but I, one more thing we're going to do, and probably next Sunday, I'm going to talk about the enemy of commitment. Mm-hmm. All right, so stay tuned. Look at your neighbor say, stay tuned. Did you learn something this morning? Woo, because notice he said, hold fast your confession of what? Well, actually, a lot of people say, but that particular verse in Hebrews 10, 23 says hope. Hold fast your confession of expectation. It's real similar. Hold fast your, hold, your, 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 expect, your, your expectation without wavering. So but we're going to talk about the enemy. I tell you, the biggest enemy of commitment is your expectation. Because if you're really, uh, you really committed to something, you'll put effort in it. If you're not expecting any results then you're not going to really do much. It's kind of like prayer. If you really don't expect results, then you probably don't pray. All right, leave that. Right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word this morning. We love you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you're opening up the windows of heaven over our life. We're expecting breakthroughs. Come on, everybody say breakthroughs. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for all that you're doing in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. This morning, I feel, just really feel it in my heart, really not so much an invitation to salvation, because I know many of you, many of you say you, you might have an opportunity for recommitment, but really this morning, I, I sense in my spirit, the Lord is saying, are you committed to your local body, this local body right here? If you're not committed, it's time to make that decision. It's, it's a decision. A decision is that commitment. I said it like this, like, look at me, right, and, let me, and I will come back to prayer in just a minute. Remember, I said it like this last week, and that comes back to mind. Commitment is different from consecration. We're to be consecrated to the will of God, but commitment is the soulish outworking of a consecrated heart. Your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, that's where you make the decision. You are spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. So you got the spirit and you got the body. Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You have a soul, your mind, will, and emotions, that's who makes the decision. God doesn't make that. Your spirit saying, come on, go this way. The flesh saying, no, come on, go this way. And as we renew our minds, according to the word, our soul is being renewed. And so our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, because commitment has to do with passion. And you got to be, we talked about, if you're not passionately committed to what you're going to do, you're probably not going to do it. So you got to maintain that passion and that commitment. So that is in the soul. So it comes down to a decision. Listen, I'll, I'll just say it like this. If there's something, a habit or something you really needed to stop, it comes in that area. And when you commit, the grace comes to make the commitment. And you stick with it. You just say, I'm doing this thing where if it hair lips the devil. I'm staying with this thing as long as whatever it takes. I'm going, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to serve. I'm going to whatever it is that you're committed to. I'm going to give. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this thing. And, you know, and, and when you do that, you made a decision. You made a commitment. And then it doesn't, then it's not based on feelings. You decided. You're doing it. You made a commitment. So it doesn't matter how you feel. You made a commitment. I'm sticking with it. Hold fast 
your commitment to him. For he who promises faithful. So that means when you say, I'm doing it, he said, I'm doing it. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you. So back to that commitment. This morning, Lord, I believe there's some people in here. They've kind of just really didn't know. And Lord, we, because things that we don't know, it's called unbelief. Unbelief comes because we don't know. And then there's another type of belief, unbelief, that we do know we just choose not to. But Lord, I think if there's people in here this morning, they're choosing now that they have the knowledge and understanding helps us and gives us faith to make the right decisions, to make the choices based on your word. So I thank you this morning for adjustments that will be made in hearts this morning right now. Everybody just stand up. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Let's just do it this way. Just lift your hands and say, Father, hallelujah, if you want to, if you're ready to make that commitment, say, Father, I thank you that you have a plan for me. You have a place for me in the body of Christ and in a local body with a vision and a purpose and a destiny. And I thank you that you've designed me You've designed my supply to come through my place. And as I'm fitted, and as I'm working, a working member of my body, Lord, there'll be growth, and there'll be increase. So this morning, I commit to my place. In my heart, in my mind, Lord, I commit to you and your plan. And I choose to pursue it, to persevere in it. And I thank you for the grace that you'll bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, go ahead and laugh. Say, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha on the devil. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Come on, just praise him. And Lord, just thank you. We thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Now, again, what are we talking about? We're talking about breakthrough. But many times there's things on our end. We position ourselves, and we are set up for a flow. Amen? Praise the Lord. Did you learn something this morning? Your commitment is everything. All right. Well, Miss Denise has a few announcements before you're dismissed. We love you. Have a blessed day. Amen. Well, I'm committed to see a breakthrough. Amen? How about you? Good word this morning. Well, I want to remind you that we are selling burritos out front. So as you're stop by and check out all the Connect Group tables, $3 for burritos, and there's chips and salsa you can get on the way out. That's supporting our women's ministry. And we're going to be doing that all month. So come hungry every Sunday and support the women's ministry and get um, homemade burritos. Nice size, good burritos. And also Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, be back here. It's a special Wednesday night. We have a special guest speaker in the house. It's the mama of the house. Pastor Donna will be speaking this Wednesday night. So be here at 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Have a blessed week. You are dismissed.